Hi, everyone. Welcome to Appliance 101, where we discuss everything and anything appliance related. I'm Pat Palingo, the marketing director at Yale Appliance. And with me today is our CEO, Steve Shankoff. Today, we're live in our Boston showroom. And in this episode, we'll be discussing how to start an outdoor kitchen project and how to choose a barbecue grill. If you're new here and just finding us, I highly recommend you start from the beginning. Some of the topics we'll be discussing will compound on information we spoke about in previous episodes. Let's get started. Okay, so today we're going to talk about how to design an outdoor kitchen. So when someone starts considering that project, what's the first thing they want to start to nail down? Well, first of all, of all the things that of, of all the things we've done in marketing, this is where I've learned the most because somewhere down the line, there's just this whole profusion of products, ideas, cabinets, and everything else. And and really, for anybody that's starting, I would start with the who. Who's going to do it? Because the 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 cast could be any number of people, architects, builders, contractors, designers, landscape architects, landscapers, masons, and cabinet stores, appliance shops. Who's taking responsibility for the finished product? Not for just parts, but the finished product. Who's project managing it? Who's supplying it? What materials? So that's, that's where you want to start is the who. Because this could be just like one of those pop-ups that everybody looks at and lands and like right in second bit. So that's the first part. And the, the second part is because there's so much now, it's easy to get confused. So you got to ask yourself a few personal questions. Like what is your entertainment strategy? What are we doing? Are we flipping burgers? Or are we preparing meals? Are we going to study outside? Are we going to, um, you know, have seating outside? What is, what is your individual vision for where your outside space is? How much outside space is? Where is it from the house? The further from the house it is, the more you would want side burners, refrigeration, you know, dishwashers. I'm not a big fan of having a dishwasher outside, especially in the Northeast, but you can put in sometime in the last five years, anything you can do in your kitchen, you can now do in your outside kitchen. That hasn't always been available. So really, those are the two things, who and the what and how far, where it is, how much do you want to do? Because we can take this as, you could take this as far as you want to go with the outside space, which is something that's, that's certainly a, a COVID related thing. But even before that, you know, this has been a big trend. Even in the Northeast, it's always been somewhat of a trend down in the south so that's the first thing now we want to get into the plan right you know the grill's going to be the centerpiece but what else are we going to do i mean we could do side burners we can do asado griddles you can do um you know all types of refrigeration we can do beer taps we can do walks we can do power burners um what type of grill how big it is so we want to plan all that stuff out now is what you want to do um and that's that's how you get started. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then there's a there's so many secondary factors you yep. could consider. Certainly, there's there's venting, and we recommend not venting. I mean, if you're going to vent, you're going to need you you should play in at least fifteen hundred CFM and something really deep to capture. You know, a lot of people put these grills in three season porches, and and that is just not a good idea unless you vent properly almost com- just a grade below commercial is what i would do because you know you're you're adding you know 69 to you know 120,000 greasy btus mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that'll land somewhere somewhere in your house and it creates a really bad environment we went through venting in in our in a previous episode so certainly venting and again outside exposure would be the best just let it dissipate um lighting Certainly the farther away you go from your house, the more you'd want. Uh, what, what a really cool thing is, is uh, doing the uh, under cabinet. We used, to, we used to be in the lighting business. All kinds of things you can do. The under cabinet and lighting, uh, the little tape lighting you can put everywhere. Yeah, mm-hmm. A lot of it is um, outside rated. Just make sure it is. Um, that's a good way of really doing some nice stuff. And then you need some overhead like little task lights that you can get really anywhere. You know, in Northeast, you don't need to put fixtures up there you can put something temporary so lighting is a consideration venting um, as well so you you want to make sure you are thinking about how you're going to use this yep 
find or find the right team who's going to take care of exactly all the details for you to the finish all the way through yes yep let's talk about some specific types of products a little more depth we we touched on a little bit there's uh it's really limitless at yes this point. it's i mean anything you could put in your anything you could put in your uh kitchen you could put in there i mean you could do you know what's big is obviously we'll get into cabinets and islands in a little bit i imagine but um you know you could do warming drawers which is kind of popular when you when you grill something, you can put it in a warming drawer, it keeps food up to three hours without dehydrating it like a microwave, which you're not going to put up there. Mm -hmm. um, we can do storage units underneath. Um, one of the things that that I think is a kind of cool thing is griddles. Um, you you know, Lynx has got the Asado where you could griddle and, and maybe because the original Yale was in Canal Street, there was a Demos across the street that this guy made everything on a griddle. He made everything from hot dogs hash browns, omelets, hamburgers on the same 24 inch griddle. And you have the ability to do that outside now. It's something that's listed to go outside. Mm -hmm. um, we have, uh, what else? We have all kinds of side burners and power burners. You can do, you know, again, you know, the further away you are from your kitchen, the more you would need, uh, more convenient, you don't need, the more convenient it would be to have some sort of burner. So you're not going yo-yoing in and inside or outside your house. Yep. It's also plumbing. So you can, you could do absolutely. You can do sinks, faucets, dishwashers. Uh, we can do refrigeration. We can do drawers. We can do wine storage. Um, there, it, it, it's, it's really limitless as far as what you can do. And then you touched on it with, um, if you are building that outdoor kitchen, you want to consider the, like the countertop space you'll need. Yep. And there's absolutely more options than ever for building your, you know, considering cabinets and countertops as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, you know, we we put in the surfaces that uh, that that uh, in in the blog post we actually have a, a slide share uh, I found it on the internet of um, of the different types of islands, and they are you, you know your basic, you know your basic um, um, island shape, L shape with the little you know, the little thing where people can sit a U shape and then you've got the galley, which is, uh, which is who, where you, where you cook and then you serve. And really a, a great piece of advice I learned from, um, the urban bonfire people is if you're not sure, chalk it off, just chalk off the, the space, um, start with the grill in the middle and we'll get into grill types in a second. Mm -hmm. Start with the grill in the middle because you want to center, you know, we, when we, when we started the, how to design a kitchen, it's, you know, sinks and cooking, but in, in this one, it's, it's going to be, you start with your grill and you move forth from there. Um, and from moving forth from there, you would chalk it off, take a look and then decide, uh, mm -hmm. what, what looks good and what's right, what's right to you. Then you get into the whole seating plan and all the other accessories that go with it. And, and you, you can design something really kind of cool. And if you, uh, if you plan for elements and everything else, even in the Northeast, you could, you could, in theory, grill all year round if you have the right, um, if you have the right, uh, you know, awnings mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. to protect you from the elements. All right, great, thanks, Steve. So we talked about like how to design your outdoor kitchen. A big part of that will be the cabinetry countertops. What? How do you find somebody to help you with that? Well, there's all kinds of solutions. Uh, we talked about any types of things, you know, typically in New England, <clears throat> maybe not so much in like Arizona, Vegas, we got to worry about uh, weathering. Um, and, you know, people use that term marine grade. There's no such thing as marine grade. It's, it's, it's weather resistant, aluminum, stainless steel. Um, a lot of the lines like Lynx, um, Kalamazoo have really nice, albeit expensive kinds of islands. And there's other DIY solutions you can get to some of the box stores that are fairly expensive. You just got to worry about the materials because you don't want it falling apart. So just make sure that the integrity of the five, six, seven, eight hundred dollar island you're getting is going to last through a New England winter. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously bricks and stones are good. Um, the top's going to be deck tom. The 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 one that that I like the best, and you know, we do sell links and Kalamazoo and 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 beautiful stuff, stainless steel is uh, the marine, what they call marine grade aluminum uh, is uh, urban bonfire. Because these guys, I mean, who better than somebody from Montreal? You know, the, the companies from Montreal designing outside cabinets, but who better design something than 
than probably some of the worst climate, even worse than ours when you think about it in the wintertime. And they, they do the um, uh, weather-resistant aluminum. And, and the nice thing about them is they put a really good island together um, in multiple configurations. Like you could point and click and design anything you want from any manufacturer you want with any kind of accessory you want, and they can even add planters and everything else. And, you know, theirs are certainly more than, than, than you can get from a, um, you know, a DIY uh, box store solution, but, you know, for five to $7,000, you get something that's, that's got some integrity to it that you can accessorize. Um, and it's, it, you get a lot of these in four to six weeks, which is, which is kind of nice. And some of these other solutions, especially with, availability being tight for everything, you're not going to get it till after the season. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we talked about an outdoor kitchen, how yep. to, how to start your, your project there. Any outdoor kitchen, the centerpiece is going to be a barbecue grill. No so question. Let's, let's dive into the different types that are available. Um, common types are gas, pellet, charcoal, ceramic, hybrid grills. Why don't we go down the list? And talk about uh, what you get in each. Okay. There's there's two types of gas grills. There's pro gas and regular gas. Gas is easy. You turn it on, it goes on. Uh, very little maintenance. You have to clean it afterwards. Uh, there's two types of gas grills. There is uh, regular gas, which is typically your Weber's, Next, Next Grill, um, um, Napoleon would be a, a, a typical gas grill. Um, and then you have the pro grills. And the difference is even, you know, we don't want to look at just BTUs because a pro grill, what, what a pro grill will do will, will give you much higher BTUs. Uh, even though I said, don't look at the BTUs because I'm looking at, you know, a web at summer's got the same as uh, say a Heston, but a Heston's got 23,000 BTU burners, whereas Weber spreads them out with 10,000 BTUs. So you get a much bigger output to cook faster and sear faster. On the pro grills, you get the infrared too, which sears very fast. So infrared is different from gas. Gas spreads out the heat. When you turn your burner on on your stove, the burner projects heat outward. What an infrared does, it goes direct to the piece of meat without the airflow. So you get a much better sear with a pro grill. We're talking about what, what a gas grill lacks is flavor. I mean, you get the burn kind of flavoring, but you don't have flavor flavor. Now, charcoal uh, will give you the heat of gas and will give you that added texture. Now, the problem with charcoal, I, I love charcoal. I, I love the texture of the meat. Uh, when you're looking at pro grills, they'll use, when you look at pro grill competitions, it's always some kind of combination of charcoal and wood. And um, charcoal will give you that heat and will give you that added texture. The problem with charcoal is, is the fact that you have to maintain it, that each, that each little area has got its own little hot and cold spot and you got to remove the ash afterwards. So it's a much bigger deal than say gas. Gas is a lot easier. And then uh, another common type is a uh, pellet style grill. Yeah. Pellets become really popular lately and it's, 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 it's really interesting to read the comments. People either love it or hate it, but you have to know what it is. What a pellet does is add flavor really well. Um, you can buy pellets in like, if you name a flavor, there's a pellet for that. I'm, I'm surprised that I haven't seen a cotton candy pellet to make your steak cotton candy-ish. Mm -hmm. But there's tons, thousands of different kinds of flavors, whether it's mesquite or that type of wood flavoring or, 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 or pecan or whatever it is. The problem with pellet is it doesn't reach the temperatures of a gas grill. So it's not a grill. It's kind of an outside convection device. So with flavor. Mm -hmm. So it's like your convection stove. I, I think the temperatures go up to about five, 550, whereas gas grills are 900 or above gas and charcoal. So you're getting better flavor. They have, a lot of them have really nice Wi-Fi interfaces. So if you want to smoke something and leave a pork, uh, pork shoulder on for like 12 hours and yeah, you know, adjust the temperature from Wi-Fi. Traeger does that very well. One thing Traeger cannot do is, hey, let's put on some burgers and get them ready real quick for the game. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get that under pellet. And as long as you buy that with that understanding that it is not fast, it's flavor, but not fast, uh, pellet's a good option. And then another another type would be uh, 
the ceramic cooker. Ceramic, yes. Ceramic, the, the ceramic's got a cult following uh, for especially the big green egg mm -hmm. because ceramics can do anything. Um, they were originally brought over from Japan when the GIs were stationed there. And it could do anything. It can cook any type of thing. The, there is a problem with, with uh, ceramics, whether it's Kamado Joe or, or Big Green Egg, is you got to learn how to use it. Um, and there is a learning curve to it. Uh, but you can cook anything in it once you become adept at, at that particular type of, that particular style. And then there's a... Uh there are some grills that can combine one or more of those types of oh, yes. hybrid style. Yeah. If we're talking about brands, probably the best, everyone can tell everyone, we can talk about different grill technology, but everyone will say what the best grill actually is. And that's Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo um, is a custom order grill. We, 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 it's got a, a number of notable features that are very interesting. A, it's got a hybrid drawer. Now we always say the, you know, speed of gas. We talk about that. We talk about texture of, of wood and, and charcoal for flavor. But this is the only grill that can combine all three. It's got the hybrid drawer underneath where you underneath uh, where you can infuse the meat with charcoal and wood in that drawer as, and, and have the speed of gas. And it's got a deeper well in it. So the deeper well will provide a natural flow of convection air. So this is really the best grill for, for, for speed, flavor, texture. The only bad part of that grill is it starts at $10,000. But uh, if you love to grill, that Kalamazoo is, is, is exceptional in, in the way the food comes out. So let's dive into some brands. We talked about sure. Kalamazoo there. There's brands that run the gamut from you know, $10,000 and up down to, you know, four ninety nine and up sure. for a good, sure, sure, sure. a good barbecue grill. Why don't you want to take us through? Yeah, sure. But first of all, uh, again, we, I already said and contradicted myself. Don't look at BT. You got to look at, especially if you live in the Northeast, um, you have to look at quality of construction because I, I firmly believe, you know, we, we've, we've sold every, we've tried to market every type of grill and we've, we've pulled a lot of grills off the market, you know, uh, our, one of our original chefs, we, we had a new brand in here and she put her hand in the middle to, uh, while it was working to, to illuminate the fact that there was a cold spot in the middle of the grill. So you, you want to be careful if you can, and this is really hard to do, see a demo of it, but just be very careful. You want to read reviews, obviously, as we say in almost every episode. But if we're talking about Kalamazoo being the best, what are the next best? I would say the next tier would be Lynx and Heston. Lynx has... Lynx was the original kind of high-end grill before even Kalamazoo. And they have that high output, 20, 23, uh, 25,000 BTU in their regular line, 23 in their Sedona line. They, they were the first with that variable sear uh, of uh, either 23 or 25,000 variable. And, and searing is really good, especially for me, because it provides that outer kind of char. Mm -hmm. So they were the first to do that. They they have any number of grills with combination of, of gas burners and they have that all sear unit, which is really popular. Although I do think people should get a combination of gas and sear because you gotta be very careful with infrared that you don't burn, but it is very fast. And then you have, um, then you have Hest and then they have different rotisserie models. Obviously you like to rotisserie. They put the infrared burner on the back to cook really evenly, very nice. So again, you have the rotisserie on the back, which can, um, and you have the rotisserie burner. It's 14,000 on the links. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have very even heat. Okay. Then you have the new grill, which is Heston, which originally was a commercial company. Originally, as I understand it, a vineyard, and then a commercial range company, and then a residential barbecue company. Now they have a, a residential range as well. And they have a different, they have a different style. They have a very thick grate, so they hold the heat better for better sear. They have 12 different, really interesting, odd named colors that you can buy. Uh, but they have a really, really good rotisserie with a, with a variable up to 18,000 BTU, uh, uh, back burner. So you can really cook on a, on a, on a Heston on the back as well as on the front. And it's got, 
um, the best rotisserie as well. So Lynx and Heston would be in that next tier. After that, really, what we recommend is, is, is Weber. And Weber goes down to uh, from $379 to all the way to uh, $3,000. And with the Weber, you're going to get something, a, a, a very solid grill. It depends. When you're buying a Weber, you know, the spirit is the smallest. And they have a, you know, they, and then you go to the Genesis, which is the midsize that gives you some option. And the Summit gives you the infuser and the rotisserie. Um, but when you go down from, from a Weber at 379, you're going to some brands that, that, that really aren't going to last as long. The good thing about Weber is, again, you know, if you're going to leave it exposed to the elements, what you want to do is put a cover on it, clean and put a cover on it for the season every time. But a Weber is going to last a lot longer than, a, say, a grill at 299. And, you know, we carry all different kinds of appliances, you know, from 300 to whatever in, in, as far as in, in terms of expense. Mm -hmm. Um, but we only really carry Weber and then lines up from a Weber because really what you're going to get is a, a product that's not going to last a, a New England winter unless you maybe you put it in a garage or something. Um, so that's what our recommendation is. And then these are some common questions we get sure. in the barbecue category. Mm -hmm. you, we touched on it briefly. The difference between that pro style grill and a regular gas grill. Why don't we just sum up the key differences there? Key. First of all, it's it's construction. Uh, a, a, a pro grill is going to be stainless steel, and and um, even Weber's are going to have some plastic in it, um, in in materials that I won't weather as well as, as stainless steel. Say, and then you have really the the real the real difference is the BTU output per burner. The difference between a 23 or a 25,000 on a Lynx Pro or a Lynx Sedona or Heston Pro versus Heston uh, Aspire of 23 to 25,000 versus 10 or even less. Uh, it's, 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 it's pretty, you know, having twice as much amount of heat means you're going to cook a much thicker steak, much more evenly and much faster. Mm -hmm. and then when you talk about most, well, almost every grill other than a pro grill won't have the sear. I mean, Weber, as much as I like them, has a sear station. It's really just another row of burners. And, and really, as I said before, burners spread the heat out, whereas infrared is a direct heat onto the food that you're cooking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So on the pros, you're going to get uh, infrared versus just another row of burners, which is just more kind of added spread it out heat. Yep. yep. So that's really construction, B2 output, sear capability. You do have some special features and some infusers and everything else, but 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 that's really the main why you buy a, a pro, and it really depends on how you cook too. And then, when someone's considering that high end of the Weber line, like the Summit series, comparing that to one of these pro style grills, what are, what are the considerations there? Okay, um, really, when you look at a Summit, Summit advertises really well. It's it's sixty thousand BTUs. It's a 10,000 BTU sear. It's, um, it's got a smoker box in it, which is kind of nice. If you want to infuse with, um, it, with meats and it's got the sear station. In it. But again, even if you're talking about just a, a lesser expensive Heston, which is around 5,000 versus 3,000 or somewhere around there, 35 to 55, depending on when you buy it. You're talking about the Aspire being 23,000 BTUs versus their 10. Um, you're talking about the sear being um, uh, infrared. The the back uh, the back rotisserie will hold more meat and and has a better infrared sear at fourteen thousand versus ten thousand on the infrared mm -hmm. uh, on the Weber. Mm -hmm. the Weber still has an infuser in it, which is kind of nice. But in terms of overall grilling, as good as when you look at the specs, you know the Summit looks good and is a good grill. You know, uh, for people that don't want to spend seven, eight grand for a true professional, you're looking at Link Sedona, Heston Aspire, Weber Summit. Weber Summit is the, the le by far the least expensive three. Still looks good. But you're not going to get the 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 performance you will with the other two. So why don't you sum up for us? Um, what are the key takeaways when choosing a, a barbecue grill? What do are, what are people need to consider? It really, it's it's it, you know it goes back to the outside kitchens. Like, what's your entertainment strategy. I mean, what are we cooking? Um, if we're cooking burgers and dogs, you really don't need a pro. You can get, you can get by with a uh, Weber sp spirit for something small, 
the Weber Genesis is, is the most popular we sell. I think that's fine. The more you cook and how you entertain, the better the grill should be. Um, I, I think the Heston and Lynx will be able to cook differently than, say, a Weber Summit will. And I think Kalamazoo, for those who really want to spend, is probably the best grill you can buy. And, and I don't think you should ignore the pellets as long as you see the display. And, and, and I love the charcoal. Uh, I, I think charcoal from a texture and it's not an expensive item. It's just you need to you need to make sure that the charcoal is even, you light it evenly um, and you maintain it and you get rid of the ash. I, I like all I like all the options. It really depends on how you cook is what you buy. It's, you know, I, I don't like saying, well, buy a Kalamazoo or buy a Lynx or, or something. It's how do you cook? And, um, and, and that's the grill you buy. All right. Great. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. A link to our free barbecue buying guide will be in the description and show notes for easy access. Remember to watch the previous episodes to learn about all types of kitchen and laundry products, plus insider tips on how to find appliance dealers who offer the best delivery service and installation experiences. As always, feel free to reach out or visit any of our Boston area showrooms. Thanks for watching.